Hi, it's Meg from Swiss Watch Expo. Today we have the ultimate in-house showdown, the Patek Philippe Nautilus and the Patek Philippe Aquanaut. Stick around, I'm gonna show them both to you. Hi, it's Meg from Swiss Watch Expo. Welcome back. We always enjoy you uh, tuning into our YouTube channel, watching our videos, and you all know me well enough by now. You know, I'm a huge Patek Philippe fan. Of course, the in-house battle is always the Nautilus versus the Aquanaut. Two very important watches to the Patek Philippe family of collection of watches, and I have two really fun ones to show you today. So we're going to um, just jump right in. Most of you already know, but I'm going to, just in case you're a newbie or a first time visitor to our YouTube channel, I'll give you a little bit of background. Uh, Patek Philippe, of course, the finest watches made in the world. So well known, just extraordinary timepieces. And the Nautilus was actually introduced in 1976, and it was quite revolutionary at the time. Uh, AP and, and Vacheron had already jumped into the steel sports model market. And, not, and Patek Philippe followed suit in 1976 by introducing the Nautilus. Most of you guys know that Gerald Genta is the designer of the Nautilus with respect to the design of the case. Um, what's really interesting is the name comes, he was inspired, it says it was his best five minutes of work ever. Apparently the executives of Patek Philippe were having lunch. He was sitting off to the side, doodling on his napkin and uh, drew the case of the Nautilus, which is now so well known and so iconic. The inspiration for the Nautilus and his drawing was actually from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The submarine in that particular piece of work was named the Nautilus, so that's where the name came from. And of course it has its very iconic porthole design for the case. So well known, this one's really fun. So 1976, uh, huge, huge, huge success in the markets. So, you know, we always do the would have, should have, could have. When they were first introduced, stainless steel, they sold for $3,000. I wish I'd bought some, didn't. So <laughs> now we know they're just one of the most collectible watches, highly sought after. Uh, we always have uh, some really great ones to show you. And this one in particular, I picked for a couple reasons um, to just show. It's got the classic steel case and bracelet which is more unusual than uh, you would see on, let's say, the Aquanaut. But also this one in particular. So we talked about the first Nautilus was a 3700 series. Uh, looked very similar to this. And then for the next 20 years, they produced other models and variations of the Nautilus. But it wasn't until 1998 where this particular, this is the 3710-1A, was introduced. And what makes this one uh, so unusual and so fun in its history of the Nautilus of watches and series of watches is that it was the first one in 20 years that had a complication other than the simple time and date. Um, it's fun to see, but what you'll notice, almost at first glance, you'd think I'm holding it upside down because you see the logo down at six o'clock. It's not upside down. That's the Patek Philippe logo down at six o'clock. The reason they moved it is there's actually a really wonderful power reserve up here between 11 and 12, but they purposefully set that off-centered. It's asymmetrical. So as, um, as you wind it, you can see, I'll wind it here for you a minute. You'll see that we're adding to that power reserve. You'll see the indication of that power reserve becoming more evident. And it's just super fun, but really clean. Of course, the Nautilus is also always known for, it's an automatic watch, just how thin it is. This one is a 42 millimeter. The other thing that was important about this 3710 is the 3700 was a 42 millimeter. For the next 20 years, they produced other sizes, but they went smaller. When they brought the 3710 back, they went back to the 42 millimeter. So it was really the first time in 20 years that they'd brought back another full size uh, extra large or jumbo, if whichever word you want to apply to it uh, in the Nautilus, but just such a special timepiece. It's still sports watch, uh, very, very durable, but just the elegance and the precision and the design behind this. Of course, we talked about the porthole case. One of the big differences between the Nautilus and Aquanaut at first glance, if someone has one on and you're trying to figure out which one it is, the wings on the outside of the Nautilus. You always find it where the case, that porthole is widened to the wings but also as you look more closely, just the integration of the bracelet 
Every one of these links are actually handmade uh, as well. This is not a you know, uh, high fast production timepiece. It takes years to craft this. It's so beautiful. You can see all the way around to the clasp as well. But the links have that beautiful combination of high polish and satin finish. But even on the inside of the case and the bracelet, we don't always show you the back sides of the bracelet, but you can see here just how beautiful, how finely each one of these blocks are crafted, how well it's put together. It's so smooth. There's nothing on here that's going to pinch your arm when you're wearing it. And it's really made with that much artistry and precision on purpose. So just a lot of fun, this particular 3710. It's not one that we have in very often. I just think it's so much fun to see. See, I was holding it upside down again, just because I'm so used to seeing the logo at the top. But there we go, power reserve at noon and between 11 and 12, the Patek Philippe symbol at six, and of course, your date at three o'clock. Very elegant, the Roman numerals that are stand out, but again, very, very subtle. It's a sports watch, it's durable, but it's supposed to be very understated and very elegant. The other fun piece about this particular Nautilus, this is the box it comes with. It's the wine, it has a self-winding box on it. So a lot of fun, we don't always see these. A lot of times when we get these wonderful time pieces, by the time they come to us, the box hasn't gotten to us as well. But this one, I love the winder on the, on the uh, Patek Philippe, and it does come. So if you're going to call me and have this one sent home to you, the, the winding box will come with it as well. But we're doing the showdown today. So Nautilus, you know I'm a fan of it. I think it's beautiful. I love it. It's thin, it's sporty, it's elegant, all steel, wonderful steel bracelet, gorgeous timepiece. But you all know that in 1997, so the year before this one was reintroduced, put this one down here for a minute. Of course, they introduced the Aquanaut. The Aquanaut was first introduced on the tropical bracelet only. It, do, it didn't first come out with the steel bracelet. So this particular one, the 5167-1A, is the steel bracelet. So one of the fun things side by side, just to note, is the difference in the bracelets. A little bolder, a little sportier. Of course, the Aquanaut, they removed the wings from the Nautilus. You still have that similar porthole design, but you notice that it's much more bold. That dial has that geosphere pattern in the background. Uh, the hands of the Nautilus are beautiful, uh, white gold, where the hands on the Aquanaut are a lacquered white, so more luminescent, much more bold in its numbers with the Arabic numbers and minute markers all the way around. So just in general, a more uh, bold and uh, current maybe, exciting, I don't know. I think they're so different, but so beautiful each. So it's really a preference of which one you like as far as the look of. Very, very similar in size. Very similar in thickness, you can see but just a different look, different generations, different options with respect to the Nautilus and the Aquanaut. I'd love to know which one you like the best, which one comments in the section below. Uh, let me know if you were taking one home with you today, is it going to be the, the Nautilus or the Aquanaut? Extraordinary timepieces. I can't finish the video without reminding you that we're so privileged to have a master watchmaker who works specifically and directly for Patek Philippe all of our watches are exclusively authenticated and serviced by him before they ever go to you. It's one of the biggest privileges we have here at Swiss Watch Expo. I never wanna uh, miss an uh, opportunity to mention that to you because if I'm buying a pre-owned Patek Philippe only from Swiss Watch Expo, because we have the best of the best as far as who's taking care of it for you. These are two extraordinary timepieces. Not sure how long they'll be around, but you guys know you can always give us a call here at Swiss Watch Expo. We'll be happy to FaceTime with you and find the right one for you. But I wanna know, what is it today? Nautilus or Aquanaut?